everyone. Thank you once again for tuning in to our new episode of The Bottom Line. We hope everyone had a chance to relax and enjoy the weekend and are prepared for the upcoming week. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, my co-host Syed recently dropped a, video, a special video relating to image exif and uh, metadata, metadata analysis and removal. So please check it out if you haven't already. And let us know if you want any other topics in the coming weeks and months ahead, and we'll do our best to try to get you the best information possible. Uh, just a reminder, this podcast can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Uh, so just to start off, I'll give you an agenda of what we're looking to talk about this week. So Sai will start off by giving you a, an update on uh, cybersecurity in the tech world. Um, first of all, I'll talk about Bumble, the Bonobos hack, um, Shazam vulnerability, the Microsoft Edge update, um, Windows RDP and DDoS attacks. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, short squeezes, including companies such as GameStop, Tesla, AMC, and Just Energy. And we'll, we'll end off our episode giving an update on the stock market, including the moves that Sai is making in his portfolio and the moves that I'll be making as we look towards the market in, in the next few months. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive into it. Sai, I'll give it to you. Hey, guys. Um... Welcome to episode five. So um, in this, I wanted to co cover a couple of things um, that happened in the cyber um, world um, this past week. So uh, first of all, uh, first I wanted to mention uh, the Bonobos, uh, um, the Bonobos hack where um, basically Bonobos is like a store, a men's clothing store, and it suffered a data breach where the hackers were, were able to leak 70 gigabytes of um, their database. And uh, this men's clothing store has, um, they suffered this massive breach, which, expo which exposed millions of customers' personal information after their cloud backup of their database was downloaded by a threat actor. Uh, the database leaked was a 70 gigabyte SQL file containing various internal tables used by the Bonobos website. The database also included various data like customer addresses, phone numbers, partial credit card numbers, so those last four digits, order information, and password history. I want to also mention that the passwords stored in the database are how were hashed using um, SHA-256 and SHA-512, according to the threat actors. So um, the threat actors were able to find out how the passwords were hashed. Um, you can always read more about this in the article, which um, we will put in the description of this podcast. Next, I wanted to cover the Shazam vulnerability. So um, this vulnerability um, basically um, allows a malicious actor to know a victim's location. For those of you that might not know what Shazam is, it's basically an app where like you play a song and it detects um, the name of the song. So initially, this was discovered. Um, this vulnerability was was discovered before in 2018 by a British IT security researcher, um, Ashley King, and um, Ashley King reported the same issue back in 2018, and um, essentially, um, Ashley was um, collected a bug bounty by discovering this bug. However, since Apple acquired um, uh, acquired Shazam in early 2019, Ashley wasn't given a reward. However, the vulnerability was on both Apple and Android back in 2019, so an attacker could um, um, would uh, send a malicious link to their intended victim, and if the victim opened it, this would automatically open the Shazam app and execute the malware as a backdoor and comp uh, compromise the victim's location. So Shazam uses something called deep links as part of its navigation, and Ashley found that a specific exported deep link was an execution executing within its parameter, hence allowing external resources to be in control. Uh, so this web view included a few JavaScript interfaces that allowed content to communicate with the Android and iOS APIs, and that made it possible to uh, pull back device-specific information and essentially the last known precise location of the user. So they patched the issue back then, but a few days ago, uh, last week, uh, Thursday, I believe, it was reported that this vulnerability is up and active again. I really wanted to bring this up, uh, not only because of the security hazard, but also to highlight Google and Apple's bug bounty promises. Um, the location leak that Ashley found in 2018 wasn't deemed critical enough by Google or Apple to pay out a bug bounty. Funny enough, though, the same vulnerability hits them three again three years later. I would love to talk about bug bounties and how they work, but essentially what it is is that companies pay ethical hackers um, to find bugs in their software. And um, this was a very high dev, um, high level definition of bug bounties. 
but um, I would love to do an exclusive on bug, on bug bounties if um, are, if you guys are interested. I did drop another uh, an exclusive um, last night on um, um, uh, ekip data and metadata of um, in in images as Deepak mentioned. So make sure you guys check that out as well. Moving on now. Uh, Microsoft Edge, the browser, is getting a password generator and a, a leaked creden credential monitor. Uh, personally, I use Safari, and Safari already has this feature. So does Google Chrome and Firefox. Um, if you are uh, a Windows user and you use Microsoft Edge, um, I just wanted to make you guys aware of this. Um, and in this feature, essentially, your passwords, um, if your password has ever been involved in a data breach, the vault will alert you. Um, there's also a password vaults like uh, LastPass um, that can be used as well. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there, but that's a, that's a whole nother discussion on its own um, using password vaults. But yeah, I just wanted to point out, point out this update on Microsoft Edge. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, Windows uh, RDP or uh, RDP, uh, which stands for um, Remote Desktop Protocol, and it's being targeted. So Windows RDP servers are being exploited by a distributed denial of service botnet attacks. So um, at a very high level, there's like ports that um, these services run on and Remote Desktop Protocol runs on port 3389. And according to a report, systems that have RDP open on UDP port 3389 and, and, and in addition to the normal TCP port 3389 are vulnerable. Um, these are like two transmission protocols, so UDP and TCP at a very high level. Normally, um, on uh, RDP is open on uh, TCP port 3389, but um, if by any chance it's open on both uh, TCP and uh, TCP and UDP port 3389, then it's vulnerable to the denial of service attack. I just found this interesting, so I thought I would mention it at a very high level for view, uh, for viewers who may use RDP. Um, since we are working from home and RDP is useful to access your desktop um, or computer remotely. So if you do use RDP, please look into this for our viewers who may not have the technical background or use RDP for their day-to-day -day work. Please consult a network security professional to keep yourself safe. Um, now I'm gonna, now we're, uh, we're gonna, so that was it for like the cyber security updates. So um, uh, back to Deepak now. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So obviously there's a lot of information to really dissect there, but I think one of the key takeaways for me not coming from the cyber security and tech background is that We've seen more and more instances of these hacks and attacks coming up over, even, even since the start of um, the bottom line, we, we've been talking week after week almost, it appears with a different hack, uh, more vulnerabilities that were exploited. So um, just again, like, are you seeing a trend of more and more companies starting to implement these security measures to try to minimize these attacks? And do you think that, like, how, how close are we to being able to actually secure our servers? We're, to the point where we're not vulnerable anymore. Can you just so, speak to that? But yeah, so um, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so uh, the really big uh, uh, cybersecurity incident that um, has everybody on alert is essentially the um, first. It was the FireEye breach, and then which initially um, led on to discover that this whole thing was um, the Solar Winds. So it was um, due to the Solar Winds um, vulnerability, right? Um, and uh, the state actor Russia being behind it, supposedly. So um, this is actually put like everybody on high alert. And um, you mentioned like not being vulnerable at all um as a security as security professionals um it, it, you should never assume that your company is fully um safe because nothing's ever safe you should always be looking into how to make your um like if there's any like vulnerabilities if there's any like threats that could impact your um, systems um, because no system's ever 100% safe. It's just not, uh, if, if your system's 100% safe, that means that either you're doing your security practices wrong or like you need to update your security standards because there's always threat actors out there no matter what. And if you, if you don't, if you miss any of any, um, any updates or any patches, then um, your stuff can be ha like, your stuff can be like um, easily compromised. Just like Shazam, like um, they, this bug bounty hunter to show them that this bug was was there in their in their in their application uh, mm -hmm. in 2018 and uh, Google and Apple were like no this is nothing major and we're not going to give you the bug bounty award um, as this is just like a normal fix that we patched three years later the same vulnerability shows up again so clearly yeah. it wasn't like 
like they need to like you uh, these companies need to like take um take uh security seriously and uh they can't just assume that oh we made one fix and our security is 100 percent and uh we won't be vulnerable to any attack that's just not how it works you always gotta you mm -hmm. always gotta like stay alert yeah okay that makes sense so do you think that these attacks are actually getting more complicated or do you think it's more so these companies not being more lax about their security practices then uh, it's a bit of both. So these um, some companies like um, they uh, they don't have like as um, as good cybersecurity practices as other companies would. And again, threat actors are getting smarter. Like um, hackers are getting smarter. So a good a good security practice is to keep up with what the hackers are doing. So um, having a great red team within your organization to keep up with what the with what the black hat ha hackers are doing is a very good um, way to keep up um, because uh, these hackers they keep they keep finding new ways to um, to compromise systems and especially if it's like a um, if it's like a political thing where like state actors are attacking certain companies then like it's at a whole nother level like these guys are dedicated to like trying to compromise um, their their target so uh, it's 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 definitely getting complicated, and it's definitely get, the scope of these attacks is definitely getting higher and higher as the more we use like technology. But at the same time, um, as security as uh, um, for for best security measures, you have to keep up with what these hackers are doing. And red teaming or bug bounties is a great way to do this. Absolutely. Okay. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Again, if we see more uh, more instances of these sort of hacks or vulnerabilities being identified, we'll continue to bring them to your attention as our viewers and uh, just try to see uh, how companies are adapting uh, their their systems to to prevent these moving forward. Yeah, and if interested, we can also do like an um, like an exclusive on bug bounties and how they work. If our viewers are interested, I would love to do that. If um, you guys want it, we can put up a poll again. And if you guys want to see that, um, I can definitely provide that for you guys. For sure, that'd be awesome. Uh, so exactly. So with that being said, uh, let, let's move on to our next topic of discussion, which I'll be talking about, and that is going to be on short squeezes. So. Obviously, I think everyone probably noticed that uh, GameStop went through uh, quite a bit of a swing this week. Um, last week, we were looking somewhere around the 30, 30 to $40 range for the stock. Uh, it was obviously very volatile, but last week, uh, it took it to the next level, really. It went all the way to $76 before crashing back down to about 50 but it closed off, I think, at $62. So. Um, that was one of the examples of a short squeeze. So I, I thought it would be beneficial for our viewers to really get a better idea of what a short squeeze is, um, how it works and how it really contributed to um, GameStop's rise and other other stocks really that could be, um, could be targets of a short squeeze. So let me start off by just explaining what a short squeeze is. So what happens is a short seller can borrow shares of an asset or a company that they believe will drop in price uh, in the future in order to buy them after they fall. Um, so if they're right, then they return the shares and they pocket the difference between the price when they initiated the short and the actual sale price. But if they're wrong and the actual share price rises in the meantime, they're actually forced to buy at a higher price and pay the difference between the price they set um, at the time they shorted it and its sales price. Um, so, so short sales have an expiration date. So when the stock price unexpectedly rises, the short sellers typically tend to act fast to limit their losses and just buy back at the higher price. Um, so it's not risk the stock price running even further away and causing more losses. Um, but, but the fundamental motivation be behind the short seller is to focus on a stock they think is overvalued by the market. So, one common target has been in recent years, it's been Tesla. Um, Tesla captured the enthusiasm of many investors, obviously with its innovative approach to producing and marketing electric vehicles, and it's been well documented, but investors bet heavily on its potential. Some really last year thought that Tesla's growing far too fast, um, and they were really betting on its failure, really, um, thinking that the stock price is going to go half or even more. Um, in fact, in early 2020, Tesla was actually the most shorted stock on the U.S. exchange, 
with more than 18% of its stock in short positions. So in late 2019 through early 2020, Tesla stock soared by 400%. Um, short sellers obviously got the, got the bad end of the stick on this one, um, losing about $8 billion in this span. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, in early March 2020, which is really when COVID hit, Tesla stock, along with everyone else, uh, finally fell. So during the market downturn, the short sellers actually made about $50 billion in a sell-off that really only lasted a short period of time before Tesla accelerated again. And that's caused a lot of uh, short sellers to lose significant amounts of money again. Um, so this is basically how a short squeeze really works. Um, but the short squeeze really accelerates as a stock price rises, where, when short sellers bail out to cut their losses, as I said, when the stock price rises significantly. So what you saw in GameStop is that for the last probably five, maybe 10 years, the stock price has been constantly going down and everyone thought with their archaic business model that GameStop is basically going to end up a blockbuster and just going bankrupt. So right. everyone decided to short it. Now, what happened recently is that there was a catalyst. So Ryan Cohen, when he joined the board, it was a catalyst to increase the price of GameStop as there was more investor confidence within the stock again. As this price started going higher, these, sh these same short sellers tried to cover their losses by buying the stock back. Now, when they try to cover it, it's putting additional buying pressure on the stock and that's causing it to go higher and higher and higher. So we saw it go from $5 last year all the way to 35 and we really saw the short squeeze in play last week when it jumped all the way to 76. Now, I don't know where it ends. I don't know whether this was it and 76 is the peak, uh, which is really its all-time high, actually, I think, or whether yeah. it goes higher and higher past $100 per share. So we really can't tell where the end of it is. But um, clearly, the short squeeze is very powerful, as you can see. Um, but really it's driven by a catalyst. And in GameStop's case, it was Ryan Cohen's arrival that shifted sentiment. And um, although previous in their previous earnings report, this put really a damper on things because they, they didn't perform to investor expectations, optimism didn't fully falter and it's really pushed the stock price higher. Um, all of this to say, I think that there actually may be a bull market to invest in heavily shorted stocks. So you can even take a look at another company like Bed Bath & Beyond, for example, and see how its stock rallied from $18 last year to over $30 this year. Uh, obviously, this is nowhere near the same kind of impact that GameStop had, but you can see like a heavily shorted stock, these seem to be trending upwards now. So there could be an underlying bull market in this. Um, another candidate we mentioned last week in our episode was AMC. So AMC has gone up significantly since last week well, as well. Um, I think the main catalyst for AMC would be a spark driven by the reopening of theaters across the states, which, you, which they've been announcing. So, right. so AMC could be another target of a short squeeze. And another one that comes to mind is Just Energy, which has been going down significantly year over year. But it can benefit from the trend towards clean energy as a result of Joe Biden's presidency and his movement, movement towards clean, sustainable energy to power the future. Um, so, so yeah, th this is kind of what I wanted to bring to the attention of our users, uh, or our viewers, really, um, just what a short squeeze is, um, the power it can have, um, and also the bull market that seems to be emerging within heavily shorted stocks. That's not to say that they'll all end up like GameStop, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Do you think airlines would be a part of this short squeeze, like Air Canada, for example, or like any American airlines? I mean, I think they were actually shorted quite a bit um, with the pandemic causing flights to really just be delayed or canceled, um, lowering volume of flights, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I think with the vaccine news, the stocks have already jumped quite a bit. I don't know if they're the best candidates right now, um, but yeah, I, I do think there's a lot of short volume on those as well. But there are better names out there, like I said, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, Just Energy. I think these stocks have been shorted for years upon years. So I think you would get more thrust on one of these if, the, if it were to have an actual squeeze than something like an airline or a cruise line. 
based on my, what I understand in my opinion. Yeah, um, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I actually didn't know about short, short squeeze myself, and I honestly thought that uh, GameStop was uh, their sales were rising due to um, their console sales. Obviously, um, they didn't um, they don't they didn't release their sales um, sales report um, yet, um, and that, since that comes like later in the year. But uh, I honestly thought that due to the new consoles coming out, um, that was the reason why their stock was going up. But uh, to see the uh, to see the increase um, as um, like as high as it was this past week. I know you called the increase last week, um, saying that you see GameStop going up, but to see it that high um, this past week was um, uh, it got me wondering why. And it um, and you explained why it's the short squeeze. It was really um, it was really interesting to learn um, because I personally didn't know myself, and I'm sure many of our viewers didn't either. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like I said, like there's even on heavily short stocks, there, there's usually a catalyst that leads to a rise, right? And, and as optimism builds, the, there's upward pressure on the stock, um, which gets fueled by these short sellers having to cover it, and, and that just leads to the whole windfall that we saw last week. So obviously there has to be a catalyst, and the the potential sales going up as a result of the consoles, I think that definitely helps. Ryan Cohen coming as part of the management definitely helps. And these are all catalysts to drive the stock price higher. But um, to this extent, yeah, like it, it has to be driven by the short squeeze. And, and, and that's part of the explanation as to why this is happening. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, those are some great points you made there. Um, and uh, but do you see this uh, squeeze being um, a long term thing for GameStop or do you see the stock um, rising back to um, like its realistic price? Yeah, like I, it's tough to say how long it's going to last. I, I, I do think it will wear off at some point. I wouldn't be surprised to see it go back to twenty dollars within the next month or two. Um, but again, it, it's tough to time these things. You, you really don't know which way the market's heading, but um, these are just different factors that you have to keep in mind when deciding um, whether to invest in a company, whether to short it, go long. Like, there's multiple considerations that go into place. But um, to answer your question, I wouldn't be surprised to see it fall back to $20 at some point over the next couple of months. Right. So um, in terms of your portfolio, are you are you invested into GameStop currently? Like, how's your portfolio looking so far? Yeah, no, I, I haven't actually made an investment into GameStop this uh, last week. Uh, it's a little too risky for me right now just because of the volatility on it. So I tend to stay away from those things. Um, my portfolio hasn't really changed much over the last few weeks, actually. Um, the one sector that I'm trying to gain more exposure into is the cannabis sector because I do feel like they're in for a larger run. They've already had a little bit of a run up at the start of the year. Um, they seem to have cooled off a little bit, but I, I do think they're going to get back into it with uh, more momentum rushing in. So that's another industry I'm expected to take a larger position in. But other than that, I, I don't think I'm going to be making too many moves in my portfolio. Um, I, I know you know. Uh, I, I know you mentioned that you wanted to talk about uh, a couple of penny stocks you're considering adding into your portfolio. So maybe you can uh, talk about those. Uh, yeah, before I get into the penny stocks, um, I wanted to mention um, Line Electric as um, I, that is a stock that I am um, invested in in my portfolio. And uh, I personally think it's a good time to increase um, a position in um, Line Electric as um, Autobus uh, Seguin, a transportation operator headquartered in Laval, Quebec, an, uh, announced um, the signing of an order for, the ac for an acquisition of um, 60 zero emission Line C electric school buses over a five year period. So Autobus Seguin plans to have all electric buses into the company's current stock of vehicles, uh, being um, being um, uh, the largest in Quebec. So the reason I found this news really in intriguing is because this is the single largest order of electric school buses in North America in the industry. So the first 10 buses will be delivered through 20, the 2021 calendar here and will be used from the start of the 2021-22 school year. Um, so with that being said, I am definitely going to increase my position on Line Electric as I see the stock growing up in the long term. This is a long term hold, and I feel like within the next like four to five years or even like three years, um, you can make a lot of profit on the stock. Uh, now the penny stocks. So as you guys know that penny stocks are uh, very high risk. So please do your research and due diligence. I just wanted to reiterate the fact that we're not financial advisors, and this is only for educational purposes. 
with that out of the, with that out of the way, a penny stock on my watch list is Biohitech ticker BHTG on the Nasdaq. I went through their investor presentation and um, looked deeply into what they do, and it seems promising. They're a technology um, services company focused on solutions that improve environmental outcomes. A few of their waste management include the biological disposal of food waste on site and related proprietary real-time data analytics tools to reduce food food waste generation and, pan and patent processing of municipal solid waste into a valuable renewable fuel. So this is straight from their um, investors presentation and it caught my eye. Climate change, global warming, whatever we may want to call it, is impacting our, our planet, right? And going forward, we as humans, um, human beings, have to do a better job of taking care of our planet. This is why EVs were invented in the first place, right? To reduce, the, um, to reduce and eventually eliminate carbon emissions. Right now, the garbage we throw out goes to a landfill. From my understanding, what BioHighTech is proposing is that instead of garbage going into landfills, they'll take the waste and turn it into renew renewable energy. Their primary, their primary goal is to reduce or eliminate landfill usage, reduce food waste generation with a behavior changing data analytics platform, lowering carbon emissions and other harmful greenhouse gases, and lastly, helping helping keep plastics from reaching the oceans. Um, they also have um, on-site food waste disposal te technology, which will be deployed in sectors such as restaurants, hospitality, grocery, maritime crews, maritime and crews, government, food services, and healthcare. One thing here that I found interesting is that they can turn solid waste into liquid waste and the discharge uh, and then discharge it through any standard sewer line. Um, these are the, like some of the details about their technology. You can always read about them on their website. They also have a list of their partners, which includes um, some of them, uh, which are um, Carnival Cruise Lines, the Philadelphia Eagles football team, Marriott, Cheesecake Factory, and the U.S. government, to name a few. So as we all know that like Joe Biden is in office now and within the next four years, it would be a fair assumption to make that reducing um, landfills will be on his roadmap. According to um, BioHighTech's document, uh, documentation, it controls the exclusive U.S. development rights to deploy fa facilities using the patented high efficiency biological treatment, treatment process in 11 Northeast U.S. states and Washington, D.C. Um, there is an entire video on their website that shows this process, and I highly recommend you guys to check it out as it compares a traditional waste collecting process to their process. The link to these resources can be found on their website, which is in the description um, of this podcast. Um, right now, uh, it's trading at at a dollar seventy four per share, and I see my position increasing on this as the months pass. Definitely keep the stock on your watch list and keep an eye out on what this company does to grow. I see this. I see this as a long term hold, but it will be interesting to see how they do in the long run, and the potential to grow is definitely there. I, I think this is a, a great company you've brought to everyone's attention. Obviously, it's it's in a segment that's going to be in more and more demands uh, with Joe's, Joe Biden's presidency uh, moving along. Um, the one thing that I personally look at before making an investment decision, especially in penny stocks, is are there any other barriers to entry for other competitors to come in and really take their cake, right? So. Right. When you mentioned this, I think one of the first things that comes to mind is, okay, who else can really come in? And I think one of the first things I thought of was Bill Gates and, and Bill right. and Linda have their own foundation, obviously, that, that targets a multitude of, of, of areas, but one of them is against fighting climate change, um, sustainable energy, and, and the green environment, right? So when I'm looking at the stock, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is a great company, good long-term prospects, but what's stopping some someone like Bill Gates or another big-time investor from coming in, starting their own project, and really taking their piece of the pie? Right? Yeah, so um, that's interesting, yeah. Um, if that were to happen, obviously, these um, um, this company would, like, suffer a lot, and, uh, and uh, it, that wouldn't be good for this uh, company at all. But, uh, yeah, that's I, I, I don't know if they'll suffer per se, but they might have to pivot their model because I, I, I don't know how strong their barriers are to entry. I know they have a few patents like you mentioned, but right. uh, in the grand scheme of things, they might have to be able to pivot uh, to different 
sort of business models to try to combat more and more competitiveness as they try to come into the space. So yeah. while it, it can grow long term, it, it does have to stay on its feet in terms of being able to navigate uh, competitors and, and the changing landscape overall. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, garbage collection and landfill is something that like um, is uh, a concern for like um, many uh, of like for all of us um, as landfills are a big problem. Right. And uh, with Joe Biden coming in, um, this should be like not a priority, but like it should be somewhere on his plan to get re- reduce the number of landfills that, that are yeah, used. Definitely so, should be on his radar for sure. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this company does have uh, potential. So yeah, definitely take a look into it. Uh, visit their website and do your due diligence. Uh, learn more about them. Keep them on your watch list and um, yeah, go from there. Definitely, definitely recommend keeping uh, keeping updated with uh, what these guys do. Exactly. And I just want to voice uh, your, your earlier statements. But again, we're not financial advisors. We're just trying to provide information about different companies to you. Um, obviously, do your own research before investing in these companies. Make sure you're comfortable with them. Um, obviously, you would want to look at their financial position, what their long-term prospects are. Um, again, just just do a complete 360 uh, review of the company you want to invest in so that you're comfortable putting your hard-earned money towards it. Um, yeah, not, we're not financial advisors. We're just providing this information for educational and entertainment purposes. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, always know your risk tolerance as well. Um, and like, yeah, um, good, um, uh, thank you for reiterating that, Deepak, because uh, the next stock I want to mention is uh, another penny stock. And again, penny stocks are risky, as I mentioned before. But uh, this one's another EV stock, and it's called Grande West Transportation Group, ticker bus.v. And it's trading at about um, 420 a share currently. Okay, so with Line Electric, they got their EV school buses and um, like looking forward in my eyes, all of transit within the next 10 years or even sooner will be will transition to electric. Um, I'm ready to commute in an electric TTC uh, when I'm going to work. But uh, uh, jokes aside, um, this company based in BC is developing EV buses and their major competitor, um, CLLG Merger Corporation, hasn't sold a single EV bus yet they're trading at around 27 to 28 dollars per share at this low price per share and already having developed 500 buses in the bc area compared to their counterpart who hasn't developed and who hasn't like deployed any any um any vehicles any buses yet um uh, and uh and merge and slowly moving their way into the us and the rest of canada i just see major potential in this stock um, not to mention they have partnerships with BMW i, which is BMW's EV um, battery. So I think 2021 will be their best year. So definitely add this to your watch list. I think by 2022 and 2023, their market cap will even be higher. So definitely a long-term hold. Um, it is a risky stock. It's a penny stock, but the potential is there with this. Right. And, and again, it's, it's playing on more of the themes um, really for this entire decade with, with it being EV, sustainable energy, um, and, and, the, and green, uh, green the, the movement towards uh, being green, right? So again, it, it, it caters towards that trend, but once again, similar to the previous penny stock you mentioned, um, there are a lot of competitors already entering this space, so they're going to have to be nimble in terms of adjusting their strategy. Um, I, I know you mentioned like the electric TTCs and whatnot, so obviously that's that's a great idea. But there's bound to be competitors that enter the space, and and they're gonna have to be able to differentiate, right? Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. So so thanks for that. Uh, so I, I personally don't really invest too much into penny stocks, so I, I don't know too much about them, um, other than the fact that obviously they are subject to a lot more volatility, and um, they're, they're obviously a lot more risky. So again, before making a decision to invest in the penny stock, make sure that it's well within your risk tolerance and you're only investing the amount that you're comfortable with putting in, knowing that it could, it could go either way. Right, yeah. Um, these are risky, uh, really risky stocks. And um, uh, like uh, we keep saying, and we'll say it again, um, do, your, do your own due diligence. Check out their website. Keep them on your watch list and see how they do. And then, um, yeah, keep those factors into play if you do uh, decide to look into these stocks. Absolutely. So with that being said, I believe that's all we had on the agenda for this week's episode side if you if you want to add anything as part of our closing remarks before we end the episode 
there was one thing that um, I wanted, I, I actually, um, that came to my mind right now that I wanted to mention uh, for uh, cybersecurity um, news, and that is that um, I was reading a report and uh, President Joe Biden is actually hiring a group of uh, national security veterans with the, with deep cyber ex expertise. So this is just to add on to like how, how aware um, the U.S. government is of cybersecurity, especially with like um, uh, state actors, um, uh, attacking, attempting to attack the U.S. Um, uh, via cyber attacks, right? So um, this is a, definitely a great move by Joe Biden um, within his first week into office. So just wanted to point that out. Yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Again, like all these hacks are, are really bringing more attention on to it and there's more eyes than ever. And it's uh, it's prudent of Joe to start off by uh, making these significant changes. So. Great start to his presidency. I look forward to what other changes he brings up, uh, brings ahead, for sure. Yeah. Um, with that being said, um, uh, this will uh, mark the end of our episode. Um, uh, we will have more exclusive um, episodes coming for you guys. Um, so last night um, we did uh, we did drop the um, EKIF uh, metadata image um, image uh, um, analysis and um, and removal um, episode. So be sure to check that out. Um, in the uh, coming weeks ahead, we will have um, we will have an exclusive on taxes and how tax um, how tax works. So um, Deepak is working on that and uh, um, we'll also look forward to that dropping uh, soon as well as I personally look forward to that dropping as I can edu as I can learn a lot from that too and I'm sure you guys are too so look forward to that and of course if there's anything else you guys want us to talk about in an exclusive anything of your interest uh, please 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 let us know and we would love to um, we would love to do an exclusive for you guys to educate you guys and um, if you do enjoy our content so far um, be sure to follow us on all the streaming platforms so Spotify Apple Music Music, Google and uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and also YouTube. And um, on YouTube, if you, if you could please subscribe, uh, subscribe to our channel, that would help us a lot. Um, and that would, that would let us know that you guys are enjoying our content. Um, other than that, next week, we'll have another weekly dropping for you and perhaps another exclusive um, as we are working on um, uh, more of those. Uh, so once again, uh, keep, uh, keep uh, following us on Instagram as well for updates and uh, we um that's it from my end we do look we look forward to speaking with you guys next week so is there anything you want to add deepak no no thanks Ed. that's great yeah i'm definitely working on tax videos so that's definitely something on on the pipeline for me i, I do want to give our viewers more information with regards to the upcoming changes from for, for the tax year especially as it pertains to changes from last year and uh how their tax returns will be affected by uh by CERB, first of all, and, and the other stimulus checks that they have received. So um, definitely something to look forward to, and I'll try to push that down the pipeline as soon as I can. So stay tuned for that. Um, as I as Syed mentioned, let us know either you can uh, direct message Syed or myself, or you can send a message to our bottom line page. Um, send any requests that you have, and we'll be sure to make a special episode dedicated to that. Thank you, everyone. One and one thing I wanted to uh, mention to end off, um, we do have our link tree set up where all of the links to our um, all our uh, like all the po um, all the uh, streaming platforms for podcasts, so Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, YouTube can all be accessible within the ease of one click. So be sure to check us out, uh, check that out as well. And that's in our Instagram bio. And you can also check us uh, check out our other social medias as well, all included there. Um, and so this is getting to uh, almost. 40 minutes now so uh, once again thank you for thank you for tuning in and we hope we will talk to you uh, guys next week absolutely thank you everyone for tuning in we'll, we'll see you again next week